he gets charged and gives the briefing on what their the battle looks like to them, why Gen, why he thinks that's a good idea to try to run across uh, this open field and how they're going to deal with the artillery and so forth. And it forces the the students to imagine what it would be like to make it a, a decision, including decisions that turn out badly. Imagine what it must have been like and what was the information available to them at the time. And, you know, the staff rides inevitably reduced to hashtag not my fault. You know, it, it, <laughs> these recriminations blaming other people for whatever went wrong. But that's part of the reality of of military affairs as well is, you know, trying to assign blame is difficult. And so students find that staff rides and simulations, which is another device that does, these are effective teaching tools to narrow that empathy gap. Well, Dr. Fever, we really appreciate you taking the time to come on. Thank you for your service and all your work um, that we've had the opportunity to learn from over the years. Well, thank you. Uh, can I end with a little anecdote about thank you for your service? Yeah, sure, of course. Which is the, not about the podcast, but about that <laughs> idea. When General Dempsey was chairman, and I have the good fortune of co-teaching with him, civil military relations class at Duke is co-taught with Dempsey. But when he was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, I, I urged him to push back against this thanks for your service, you know, buying the military a cup of coffee in the airport and uh, and for all the things that you've explored in in earlier podcasts, that not because it was bad. I think it's a. I think most citizens who are thanking military personnel for their service do it sincerely and and are really trying to show affection. And it's a good civic act. And so I I'm not opposed to it, but I think it's too limiting. And so I urged him to do a public service announcement where a uh, you know, television commercial where. He would be in the airport dressed in his you know, uniform and someone would come up to him and say, thanks for your service. And he would graciously accept it. And then the next scene, he would be going, say, to a middle school classroom and he would go up to the teacher and say, thanks for your service. And then he'd go to, you know, the uh, public health worker. Thanks for your service. Go to the emergency room doctor. Thanks for your service. And he would embody the notion that there's a lot of Americans doing public service that are not in uniform, mm -hmm. and we should be thanking them for their service in the same way that we thank the military for service. I couldn't convince him or his staff to do it, not because they thought it was a bad idea, but because of other factors. But I still think the, the notion there is an important one, that as a country, we'd be better off not if we thanked the military less for their service, but if we thanked other people more for what they were doing. There are definitely so many ways that people in America serve, and I think that recognizing that is one of the best ways we can close that empathy gap that you're talking about. Indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today on Thank You for Your Service. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at TYFYS underscore podcast. And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts so you'll get our next episode as soon as it's released. Thank You for Your Service is produced by Ashwarya Kumar, and our publisher is Haz Yano. Special thanks to Don Hoover. This podcast is a production of the University of Chicago Public Policy Podcasts and is in no way intended to reflect the official positions of the Department of Defense or any other military entity. I'm Thomas Kresnation. And I'm Nick Pareso. See you next time.